Hello Graphic Design. I am going to show you how to begin tracing um, and then illustrating your box design. So I looked around my house and I found two different boxes that are good sizes. So the first one I found was my webcam box and I've already taken it apart so I can see it flat. So that's kind of a first step, kind of determine what your product's going to be and then a box that it might fit in. I then found a second box, which I thought was interesting because it has a top and a bottom, which is another whole concept of design. So whatever it is that you're designing, you want to come up with a box that could relate to that item. So that's the first step. Once you've determined that, then you're ready to start tracing it. So you want to get a piece of paper. And I got a little bit bigger piece of paper because of the fact that this box is just slightly bigger. And so now I'm ready to tape the box down to this paper so that it stays as flat as possible in order for me to trace it in as many ways as possible. Because the more exact it is, the better it will print out when you're actually going to put it together for the 3D version of it. So I've kind of taped it down as best I can without covering too many of the sides. And then I'm going to start by tracing with a pencil or pen as exact as I can get, because this will be what you actually illustrate on Adobe Illustrator. So I'm gonna go around all of the flaps and then outline what's called the silhouette, which is the very outside of the box itself. So I'm going around all of these areas and noting where the top and the bottom of the box is, where the back of the box is. We'll label all of that in a little bit. So I'm just going very carefully all the way around. And these little flaps, you want to get real exact in here because when you cut it apart and make the real thing, you'll need it to be very exact. All right, so now I'm at the point where I want to mark a couple more things. I want to make sure that I understand where there are fold lines. So I'm making little tick marks at the top and the bottom of any of the fold lines because I will make those into dotted lines at some point. So these ones are obvious, but these ones on the side. Now I'm going to peel away the box and I'm just going to lay it to the side so I can take a look at it and then determine some of the things that I want to keep from it. I have a ruler here as well, and the ruler is going to help me by designating with dotted lines where all of those folds were, because that will help me in my design so I don't accidentally put an important factor on top of one of the folds, and then it gets lost when you actually fold the physical box. Now, this side here is a side panel, so I'm just gonna label that for myself so I can remember. As I'm designing, I'm also going to fill in the gaps where I had my tape because I had to jump over the tape as I was drawing just to fill those in completely. And then I'm going to finish putting all my dotted lines in for the folds. So I'm going to come back to you once all my dotted lines are in and show you the next step. All right, I now have all of my dotted lines in, so that's going to designate for me where all of the folds are. Now I need to label according to this and matching it up with this what all of these items are. So I've labeled side panel. This is considered the front of the box, so I'm going to label that as front, so I remind myself. Here's another side panel here, and then I have the back of my box on this side here and then I have I noticed a couple other additional information items so I have a barcode of some sort so if I want to keep it in the same spot I might label barcode because I know my product will need to be sold I've got a logo here but your logo can go wherever you'd like you probably have a picture of whatever your item is somewhere on the box maybe some additional information here possibly the logo here. The logo should really show up a lot of places on the box because when it's placed on a shelf in a store, you'll want to make sure that it's visible from any location, however it's stacked. Um, these areas here, I'm putting an X because I know that I don't really need any design elements in those areas because those are the parts that get folded up into the bottom of the box here, like so. And then these are the items here that get flapped in but then that goes on top. Notice the logo is there and then your little flap. So that can just be part of your color or part of your design. So that's the first one that I'm going to trace to show you. Now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna trace my other box. So I took a box that has a bottom and I've actually already cut the corners 
apart because this is slightly smaller than the inside of this one. So I wanna make sure that I get the exact measurement. So I'm gonna lay that down and then I'm actually gonna show you how to cut this. So I can use an X-Acto knife or scissors. So I'm just gonna kind of put a little slit on the side here on all four corners. And then I can just kind of tear to open it up. So you can just really gently kind of pull it apart here. And I have all of my pieces. It's a little bit of a label here. This is a sticker. All right, now I want to make sure that I know the difference. They look really similar, but you might notice the one is just slightly bigger than the other one, and that's important because it needs to fit over top. So I'm going to tape this down as flat as I can. This is a little bit harder cardboard, so it's going to pop up a little bit, so I'll push down as I trace. But I want to make sure I know the size difference between the top and the bottom in order for them to fit together in the final image. So now I'm pushing down, and I'm going to trace around all of these elements as I've done before. And then remember, you want to label where your fold lines are. It may seem really obvious where they are, but it's so much more helpful once you photograph it and put it in Illustrator to know exactly where everything is. So I will be back with you after I have all of that drawn. Okay, I now have both my front and my back and I want to make sure that I know the difference so the front has these little divots so I'm just going to label this as front so I can remember and these are my side panels and then this one is my back or you can call it the bottom and that way you know the difference you'll be designing both of them what I like about this particular box is it doesn't give me a lot of information which allows me to have the freedom to really come up with how and where I want my entire design to be once you have done this, the next step is for you to photograph with your phone. And when you photograph, you wanna make sure that your camera of your phone and the piece itself are really perpendicular. So don't tilt your phone or take it at an angle. Make sure that you're taking the photo directly above it and you're capturing the entire thing. That will allow for an exact replication of what you're doing. If for some reason you have a scanner at home and you want to use the scanner for maybe a smaller piece of paper, that's even a more exact option. But a photograph will do and you'll have a nice photograph for what it will look like. I will show you that on the slideshow. Let me know if you have any questions.